How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and I just got done building this 8x12 storage shed. I want to go ahead and start the electrical wiring. Nothing major, I just want to add a couple outlets, some interior lights, and one exterior light. That's going to be fed by a 120 volt single 20 amp circuit. Now, this is a very approachable DIY project, but remember to check your local area and with your local inspector. You might be in a rural community, really outside of any jurisdiction, or you might be held to some pretty strict standards depending on the size of your storage shed and what your local code enforcement is on your storage sheds. This can kind of be an area where inspectors will interpret quite a bit differently. And the way I'm going to wire this is going to work for both if you're just feeding that circuit from your main panel or maybe a sub panel or like me if you want to kind of power this off grid you want to have some solar panels going to a portable power station and then feeding into your 120 volt circuit that you're going to wire in. Either way this will work. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so we're going to start off with this exterior rated box and mount that to the outside of our shed. Now I just have kind of the T111 siding here, so I am going to make some blocking on the back so I can get a little bit more of a secure mount with some screws going through this exterior junction box. Now with this box, this is really where the feed would come in. For me, I'm gonna power this from a portable power station. This shed is gonna be off-grid, kind of a cool little setup. But for you, if you were just bringing that 120 volt 20 amp through conduit, buried 24 inches in the ground, and down in the description of this video, below the video, I will give you a link to the exact time step where we did a very similar project pulling a 240 volt circuit, 60 amp to a sub panel, but it'll show you how we were running the conduit, how deep we were doing, how we were trenching it. It'll give you some of those details. So you could come up through, and what I wanna do then is I'm gonna have a GFCI outlet, so it's gonna have ground fault protection here, and that's gonna go into the line side. I'm gonna feed that 20 amp circuit into the line side of this, and then I'm gonna pull all the power to the shed from the load side. So everything in the shed, including the lights, are gonna be GFCI protected. So let's go ahead and mount this guy up, and then we'll locate the rest of our boxes and start pulling the Romex. All right, I'll mark the location just of the center point of that back hole, and I'll use a spade bed. Specifically, this is an inch and a quarter, so I'll have some clearance on a PVC fitting that'll be actually running in the back of that exterior box. Just drilling through the exterior siding, that's gonna give me my hole on the inside, which then I can use this two by 10 as just a scrap piece of wood I had, locate it correctly to give me a mounting surface for that box. Just toenail in this one side, with some three and one eighth general purpose wood screws, and then place two on the end here, making everything secure. So once that's in place, I'll jump back outside and now I can drill that inch and a quarter hole through the two by 10. And then once that hole is through, now we'll mount that exterior box. I'll place that PVC foot fitting in the backside, kind of serving as a bushing to protect the wires coming in and out. And then don't forget to put your caps in for the unused holes. I will not be using the one on the top or on the bottom, so I need to cap both those off. Then we'll go ahead and just use some two inch exterior rated screws to mount that box, sinking the first one and then making sure everything's squared up with my torpedo level, securing that down, double checking prior to sinking that second one, and then sinking the second screw to finish it up. So back on the inside, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place a four by four, really junction box. I'm going to be passing an extension cord through. That is actually going to be my power going to the line side of the GFCI. That would be my power coming into the shed. In my case, it's a little different. You might be coming again through conduit in the ground, but I'm gonna actually be powering from a portable power station in here. So I wanna pass the cord through here, that will plug into the portable power station, and then that's gonna go back out to our junction box and we'll wire that all up. Then I'll be passing out to some outlets here and then passing up to some lights. So we'll go ahead and be bringing everything together into this junction box. I prefer metal, that is what I'm using. I think metal just holds up a lot better. I like the ability to really clamp my Romex down here and keep it in place. You do need to be grounding all of your different boxes. So if you wanna use plastic, you can, but I'm gonna use metal for all my different boxes. So go ahead and mount that box using the torpedo level, make sure everything's leveled up and putting that plastic connector in the backside. 
But first, let's go ahead and get all of our Romex ran. So I'm gonna run this first piece of 12-2 Romex and staple that running up to a two-gang metal box, which is above and right next to that workbench area. That's gonna be feeding two duplex outlets once we get ready to wire everything up. Then I'll bring that additional 12-2 Romex, and this is gonna be a much longer run but we'll staple that up and I'm going to run it above. This is kind of a loft space right along the top of the wall. Now, again, you could run conduit if you wanted to make sure there's no possibility of any damage, but I'm not really going to store anything up on that loft space. So we should be out of harm's way. We'll bring that 12-2 into another two gang box here right at the front of the shed. And then this is going to be the power feeding two different light circuits. Now I'll feed the two different sets of 12-2. One's gonna be going to an exterior light, and then the other will be going to two additional lamp holders for the interior lights. And then for that exterior light, you can just see the backside of this pancake box. That's what the exterior light will be mounting to. So running that to the exterior box, that is done. And now I'll run that last piece of 12-2 up and we'll get a little better look here where you can see those two light locations where we'll be powering the internal light fixtures and they'll just be simple lamp holders. So now we're ready to start the wiring. I'm going to start at this first light location and I'm just going to use a simple porcelain lamp holder. Just remember when you're mounting your box you usually do need some clearance where the lip of the porcelain lamp holder wouldn't have anything that it's going against. So if this was mounted higher, I'd have a little bit of interference and have an issue. So that's why I made sure that this bottom lip was hanging over where that lamp holder would not have any restriction. And then you guys will see me using multiple different tools or things like Wago lever nuts. I think they make these jobs so much easier, like bringing together these two grounds here. It's as simple as pushing it in and flipping a few levers. It makes for quicker work. And I think for DIYers, especially like us, it just makes for a more secure connection. You can be more confident in your connections. So then we'll just strip off for the hot conductor. And then also for our neutral. And then use the little jaws on these hybrid Knipex wire strippers, which I've been using for over a year and I love these. If you guys need a reference to all these different tools and I have my Milwaukee Packout kit kind of built up over the years. It's got my Wago lever nuts in it. It's got my spacers. If I have a sunken outlet, it has my ground pigtails already made up and everything else that just makes for easier electrical projects. You can see that link in the description below the video. That'll take you over to our Amazon store. In the electrical section, you'll see all those different products that we've kind of built out. And that is always being updated as I find new things along the way that I think will help you guys out. And then it doesn't get much easier than wiring up a simple light. I'll take that J-hook around the gold terminal, making sure it's in the clockwise direction. So when we tighten up that screw terminal, it will pull down. Now I'm using a Klein Tools multi-bit here. And what I like about this one is it has two sizes of Robertson, the square bits, and those will help so much when you're just trying to tighten up these screws compared to if you're usually using a Phillips, which is gonna be prone to kind of cam out and strip out those screws. So then we'll go ahead and connect up our neutral. Go ahead and line things up with our two mounting screws. Rotate that in place. And then remember, with porcelain, you'll want to tighten things up, but do not over tighten. If you over tighten, you're just going to snap this housing and you're going to have to get a new one and maybe take another trip down to the home improvement store. So make things secure, but do not over tighten. So that's our first one. We'll do our other interior and then we'll move to the exterior light fixture before doing our light switches. Now for this one, we have power coming in and power going out. So I'm just gonna pigtail to the lamp holder itself. This is where Wagos kind of really shine because you can pre-wire your pigtails. And then when you're up on the ladder or kind of hanging your chandelier, or hanging your vanity light, you're just flipping those switches to get everything wired up. So it can save you time and again, equal a better connection in the end. So just line things up and remember, do not over tighten these porcelain lamp holders. Get it firmed up. 
set our light bulb, and then let's go ahead and do our exterior motion detecting light. Now remember, we just have a pancake box here, and I already have my Wago lever nuts ready to go. You want to keep as few connectors in this box as possible because the fill factor is very low. And also the rotation of that box. Make sure you check your exterior light and the mounting bolts location first to make sure once you start to mount it, everything lines up the way you want it. And then I will come back with some 100% silicone or exterior caulk and caulk all this to make sure no water gets into this electrical box. So now I'm gonna to bring together my two switches and these are just standard single pull switches. One is gonna be for the exterior that I'm gonna put on right next to the door and then one will be for those interior lights. Just to note, I'm not grounding these light switches. These switches actually have self-grounding yokes. So when I connect those to this cover and then the cover to the box, because we have our ground coming back here to our grounding screw, then that will bond everything together. I have my neutrals, the three different neutral wires from our three sets of Romex already coming together. Again, we have all of our grounds coming together, those four with the addition of the pigtail coming from the box. I have power from this set of Romex coming in, so that is my hot coming in. And then I'm gonna bring that into a three wire Wago lever nut. So all I have to do is bring that in right here and then close down that lever. So now I have power coming in from my hot conductors and then my switches will be then switching one hot for our exterior lights and then one hot for our interior lights. So we'll just bring this one in here and then for our interior lights, we'll close this off. So that is it for our wiring. Now I'll tuck everything back in and then use the two mounting screws to finish up the installation of our two light switches. If you do not want to do light switches, remember you can get those lamp holders just like I got, but with a pull string where you'd just be bringing power up to the lamp holder and then using the pull string to turn it on and off. But in this case, I wanted those light switches near the door. So now we're back at the two gang box right at the workbench where we'll have two duplex outlets that I've already installed in this industrial cover. Now I did ground these two outlets. I could make a similar argument that the yokes are gonna be self-grounded to the cover. And then once the cover's attached, that will then bond it to this box, which then has a ground pigtail. But this just shows you another option that you can't have dedicated grounds going in just as a backup. So even for whatever reason, if you wanted to keep the power on, remove the cover, you're still going to have your ground going to your duplex outlets. I don't recommend doing that, but that would at least keep your ground. Now, these are Legrand commercial grade outlets. These are my favorite type of outlet. I'm going straight into the back here with the hot on the gold screw and the neutral on the silver screw. That is not backstabbing. Because these are commercial grade or spec grade, they have a feature where you can go straight in the back and then there's a plate that you tighten down with a screw terminal and that's how you connect it. That is opposed to a J hook around clockwise around the outside of the screw. We already have our Wago lever nuts wired in. So I have a three wire on my hot side, a three wire on my neutral side. I'm gonna connect those up to the power coming in. And then I'm gonna bring these other two grounds into a five wire. And then we'll just have one open slot, which is perfectly fine. So now we're back at the junction box that we first installed. We have a power cord coming in here, and this is how I'm gonna power the shed. You'll see it in a minute. This is actually gonna provide the hot and neutral out to the line side of the GFCI. So we're gonna bring wires out to the GFCI. And I wanna include as much as I can in this box opposed to the junction box on the outside because that one with the GFCI installed really doesn't have much room. So we wanna keep it as simple as possible outside. So I'll be extending these out and then bringing this ground together with the rest of the grounds. Then we have our power going out to the outlets, the two duplex outlets going out to the lights, and then of course grounding the box. So I'll be bringing together the hots on these two, the neutrals on these two, and then bringing all the grounds together. And then I will pass 
the hot and neutral out to the load side of the GFCI. So we'll really have five wires that will be going out to the GFCI, and then that load coming back in will provide GFCI protection to our light circuit and our outlets. So now tying everything together and then we'll plug it into the portable power station to check things out. Remember, that plug in my case is going into the line side. Maybe for you that's the 120 volt 20 amp circuit coming through your conduit it's going directly into the line side. Then the neutral and hot going into the load side which will then feed the duplex outlets and also the lighting circuit. So you'll tuck things back here, and a GFCI outlet is a large outlet. So in a junction box like this, it's gonna be a pretty tight fit, but you should get it to work and start to work it back into place. Then you'll take your mounting screws, but do not tighten them. Just get them started, because we have that in-use cover that we need to get back into place, and you have to take that over the mounting screws prior to screwing down the GFCI because those same two mounting screws are also gonna hold this cover while securing the GFCI outlet. So go ahead and tighten those up and then make sure you hit the reset once you plug everything in so you can test out your circuit. All right, so everything is plugged in now. I have some light coming through the windows but there's no other supplemental light. So we'll test out interior lights work, exterior lights also work confirmed there and then the plugs work. For up here on the plug area, you can put additional, let's say you have a workbench like here, you can just put an additional one like I put there where you plug it into those duplex outlets and then you have a little bit more light at your actual workspace. Every one of our instances, every one of our use cases is gonna be different. And then I have that portable power station. Now that's what's actually providing the power to this shed. Now sizing one of those portable power stations and also bringing solar power into those to make it completely off grid, that does take a little bit more sizing and fitting to your exact use case. So check out this video right here and I'll go through a few different options from EcoFlow kind of in a more emergency backup situation and how do you assess your sizing and how do you know how long that battery will actually last. But then if you wanna see the complete package of actually putting solar panels and then figuring out how many watts of solar panels do I need, what size battery do I need for my application, check out this video down here over on our Everyday Solar channel where I'll be putting solar panels on this exact shed and make it a completely off-grid where this will be the only power source we'll need. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.